All right, welcome to the channel, everybody. This is Ryan. He's 12 years old. And just recently, he decided that he wanted a project car. So uh, behind us is old Danny. This is what he picked out. And we're going to give you a tour and show you what it's all about. So here she is, 1965 Galaxy 500. Two-door hardtop. Uh, it's a big block car. It's got a 390 FE in it. Automatic transmission. Uh, red on red and what sort of inspired this is uh you know we're huge roadkill fans and cletus mcfarland fans we watch all those car shows and we were watching uh the history of the riverside raceway during the 60s and the motor trend 500 nascar so uh, we sort of decided that um we wanted to build sort of a vintage nascar replica so that's that's what this is gonna be. Hopefully this is the first of many build videos. Uh, we just literally got it off the trailer, just starting to clean it out. And uh, the old Danny name comes from Dan Gurney. That's sort of the look that we're going after. Of course, he's an American icon and racing hero. So uh, Ryan sort of took to that and, and that's what we're gonna do. Uh, four brake disc conversion, lowered, We've got a top loader four speed to go in it, but it's probably eventually gonna get a five speed and most likely a motor swap. Um, probably build a 460 to put in it, I'm thinking. Uh, we're gonna gut the interior. Um, carpet's already out of it, headliner's out of it. Interior's complete, uh, well-worn, obviously, but uh, it's all there. Uh, the lower part of the back seat is out of it, but. You can see with the carpet up, there's some surface rust, but there's there's no holes, which is absolutely awesome. The, the, the body is very, very solid. So we've got good bones to sort of start with here. 94,000 miles, power steering, power brakes, AC, and it's got a radio, which is uh, not all that common, I don't think. Uh, missing a rear glass and missing a quarter glass. It looks like something probably fell on it at one point. There's some damage here to the B-pillar. And uh, this is all full of Bondo. Um, and some shoddy Bondo work at that. But uh, no holes. So um, there's a little bit of rot in the window channel here, but that's all fixable. Um, in my previous life, I painted cars for a living, so this sort of doesn't scare me. It's not, not really that big a deal. We can get in there and straighten it out weld a patch panel in or, or something like that and sort of start going for the look we want. But uh, we're happy, good solid California car. Um, it was originally purchased in Los Gatos. It's got cool original black plates. Um, hasn't been registered since 1969. Uh, the gentleman, I'm sorry, 1989. The gentleman we bought it from uh, has only had it for about three months, so that makes us the third owner. He bought it from the original owner. And uh, so I like the pedigree. It's good. Good, solid car. Uh, let's take a look under the hood. All right, here she is under the hood. Uh, again, nothing special. 390 FE. Uh, but it's all there, and uh, it runs. So um, not going to take a whole lot to get this back on the road, at least uh, initially to, you know, just go cruise it around. It does need a brake rebuild, uh, but it shifts, rear end works, you know, it fires up and runs, all that kind of stuff. So that's a really good start. Um, there's a piece of the grill missing right here. So we'll either look for a, you know, a replacement grill or maybe I can fix that. I suspect that this is broken because people think that's where you grab to release the hood and their hood release is actually, you know, right down here. So I'm, I'm not surprised. It's funny. I see that on a lot of, a lot of galaxies seem to have that piece missing. So I don't know if that's a common thing or not. Uh, cool stacked headlights. So unlike modern cars, you have a high beam and a low beam and uh, they're not mixed into the same light. So you got four headlights in the front of this thing, which I think is kind of cool. Uh, we have all of the trim. Um, not all of the trim is in perfect shape, but we do have all of it. And, you know, what we're going to use can be straightened, which is great. 
Well, let's pop the trunk. This is the only real rust in the whole car is back here. What we think uh, happened is this was stored in a barn or, or indoors, sort of, and uh, maybe a carport, and the back end of it was probably hanging out. You can see the top of the top of the bumper here is all rusty, uh, but it's straight, which is cool because we're probably gonna paint the bumpers anyway, but you can see the trunk floor here is rotten. So we'll have to cut that out and uh, weld in a patch panel, but the good news is, um, you know, they make patch panels. You can, you can buy it and weld it in. So again, not a giant problem, just uh, something that we've got to take care of. Um, it seems to me with a, a quick search that most of the parts are available for this car, either OEM or, or Repop. Uh, you know, it's got a, a broken tail light. I found tail lights, found core glass, um, you know, all the trim. Trim's a little harder to find, but uh, we have it it's it's all there so whatever we decide to use is already there and we'll we'll refinish it and straighten it out if we have to but all in all a pretty cool solid car so we're going to get to cleaning it up here and um i think first order of business is we've got a the radiator's got a few holes in it so we're going to order a radiator and get it running uh, we've probably got to drop the fuel tank and flush it make sure there's no rust in the fuel tank New fuel lines, uh, it has a new battery in it, so that's good. And then we'll rebuild the existing drum brakes and see if we can't get it on the road. And then we'll go from there. Ryan is pumped. He cannot wait to start working on this thing. So he drug out the vacuum cleaner and he's in there trying to get all the crud out of it. How's it going? <laughs> all right. So what we're likely gonna do is basically strip the interior. Um, aluminum door panels, bucket seats. We'll probably hit the floor with a coat of like 415 to stop any rust that's there and seal it in and then we're gonna undercoat it or most than likely bed liner you know spray on textured bed liner in there bucket seats uh, full cage uh, two lower two lower door bars and then kind of a back half cage just sort of period style a little bit of safety and that'll give us something to mount the four-point harnesses to and that sort of thing We're gonna try to see if uh, some of this paint will polish up a little bit. I kind of like the patina of the car Ryan does too. It's not all original paint. It's had some paint and patch, mostly on the rear half of the car, but uh, we'd like to keep it, you know, sort of as much original as possible. So we're just gonna hit this a little bit with some compound, just to kind of bring it back a little bit and see what it looks like. Um, eventually the car is gonna get lettered more than likely in period correct graphics and uh, race number, things like that. So we'd like to keep, you know, the original paint as much as possible uh, to sort of preserve that look. We're not obviously building a exact replica or a, you know, a, a SEMA correct car, but we just want the feel and the style of the vintage NASCAR. You know, we love that, love that era, the big body cars and, uh, you know, doing that sort of thing. So we're just trying to capture that look. Not show car shine, but not bad. Okay, let's throw some wax on that and see how that looks.
All right, so there's about two minutes work with a buffer and a rag. It's a little bit of wax, but it's, it's actually shining. That's pretty impressive. Actually, this paint has obviously died back and oxidizing way bad. So shiny, not so shiny. Shiny, not so shiny. So that gives me a little hope for the future that maybe we can take this thing and make it not look too bad. So, all right. All right, that's all for now. Thanks for tuning into the first episode. Please like and subscribe, and we'll catch you later.